Friday morning. I'm Mac Brothers, and welcome to another installment of everyone's favorite 30-minute horse racing program. And I wish we had 60 this week. We have so much to discuss. Breeders' Cup pre-entries. A good portion of the show will be about the Breeders' Cup. We're getting pretty close. Seven days away from the first Friday, eight days away from the Breeders' Cup Classic and that tremendous second day card at Churchill Downs. It's closing weekend at Keeneland as well. We'll talk about a little bit about Keeneland closing day on Saturday. Stakes activity from Belmont, stakes activity from Woodbine are always popular Saturday play of the day. And Rapid Redux, he did it again, 19 for 19. And we'll discuss that uh, incredible achievement that took place yesterday at Laurel Park outside of Baltimore. But I can't do it alone. I have several people helping me out over the next 30 minutes. The first man who's in his comfort zone in the handicaps right now is Rich Perloff. Rich, how are you? I'm great, Matt. How's it going? I, I'm doing really well. How excited are you for, for Breeders' Cup? Has it hit you yet yeah. or not quite yet? No, no, it absolutely has. Now, I've, I've got a lot of work to do yet. But I'm at the point now where I'm starting to see the races a little more clearly. I'm starting to move in on a couple of key horses. That's oh, good. what I want. Good. That's what good. I want. A couple of keys that I can use for both days. Your hair, your hair looks fantastic today, by the way. It looks really good. I've never. You, you have good hair, but your your this your hair is at its best right now. It's at its zenith. Uh, thank you. It looks I, really I appreciate solid. That. Uh, a, a man who uh, I'm sure groomed very well today after the uh, success that he had yesterday and we're, we're very pleased to have on the phone right now the trainer of a horse who's now won 19 consecutive races equaling the north american record held by pepper's pride and zenyatta david wells trainer of rapid redux is on the line right now david are you there Good morning well, well congratulations first of all um before we get into the specifics about rapid redux did you do anything crazy to celebrate? Uh, you know, when I talked to you on the phone yesterday, you were in heavy traffic leaving Baltimore. I hope, hopefully, you had, a, uh, you had some fun in the evening at least. Uh, we did. We uh, spent the afternoon with Robert Cole and a bunch of good friends, and my family was all there. And we came back to Penn National and celebrated a little bit of Penn National last night uh, at uh, the sports bar there. We had a good time. And good. It was just a real high on the day. Well, maybe, maybe Rich can jump into actu actually yesterday's. Uh, race, but I just want to say—I mean, the, the thing that's amazing to me about the about this streak is that it's occurred over an 11-month span. You know, 19 wins over an 11-month period, which to me is absolutely amazing. And the other thing that's incredible to me is—you're probably aware of this, David. Your horse, Rabbit Redux, has not trailed in a race since the streak began when he was a head back at first call. He hasn't trailed in a race in 18 he does straight not races. Like to have a horse in front of him. That's but that's amazing. One-dimensional horse. Well, he's not one-dimensional because he's been doing it between five furlongs and a mile and an eighth. He's been doing well, it at, at he's been yeah speed. He's been doing it at, at seven different racetracks, and uh, I don't know. Uh, let's get Rich involved in the conversation right now. R Rich, it, it looked like uh, Juan Acosta was, you know, getting a little busy at the three-eighths pole. Did you think that uh, that Rapid Redux was in a little bit no. of trouble? You at know that what? Point? You know what, Matt and David. Congratulations for me as well. It really is a, is a spectacular you. accomplishment. And I have to say, I learned my lesson too back when you were in that mile and an eighth race at Charlestown on October the 14th. I actually thought you were vulnerable in there because I thought there were other horses that had as much speed early on as Rapid Redux might soften him up. Never happened. Never in danger of happening. He's a brute at that level of competition. And he just dispirits his competition. Yes, he does. He um, he did make me a little nervous yesterday. He was a little <laughs> bit closer to the rail than we wanted to be, and the rail was a little deeper because of the mud and the rain. We're whatnot. showing it right now, David. We're, we're about the quarter pull of the race yesterday. Yeah, he was. Uh, JD looked up the inside. He wanted to make sure nobody was sneaking. He knew the horse was on his outside, but Jamie Ness is always. I mean, he's on top of his game, and that's all there is to it. And, when that horse came to him, I was really nervous. We were down in the deeper part of the track, and I think we were struggling just a little bit more than he was, but Rapid Redux always seems to find more, and he found it yesterday. Yeah, you got to be always afraid of, uh, of Jamie Ness, who's 40% right now yeah, at Laurel Park. Yeah, he's Laurel, yes, he is. <laughs> he had the one horse, Rich Hero. Bef before we let you go, um, obviously breaking the streak would be, uh, be rather cool. When are we going to see him next? And if he breaks the streak... And, you know, in, you've, obviously that's, the, that's your number one goal right now. Will we see him you maybe step up and talk to your owner yesterday, Robert Cole Jr.? He said he's not, he might not be a great at stakes horse, but he can probably compete well in some stakes races. Will we see that after he hopefully breaks the record? I don't know, honestly. Robert and I are going to have to discuss that. I would rather go out on top, you know, and yeah. when it comes time to retire him, I'd rather just retire him that way and 
hopefully we can send him to Kentucky somewhere and he can spend the rest of his life. But I would, I'd like to just go out on top as a winner. I really I just don't know if he's going to fit in the state races or not, in my it, opinion. The fan base has been incredible for this horse, too, hasn't it? I mean, it's incredible. Oh, it's getting huge. It's getting, he's got his own Facebook page, and <laughs> it's really, yeah, it's, it's Does he really tweet? getting, I'm getting a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah. compliments. I know a couple everybody. of individuals that are crazy about Rapid Redux. It's been great for the industry. And uh, David Wells, congratulations. Keep it going, and we hope you break the streak. And when we yeah. see him, and I think about two or three weeks, right? Uh, yeah, that's just that's just that. It's two or three weeks. He likes that. You know, they don't have to breed him too much. Okay. All right. Thank you okay. for joining us. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. David. Good luck. David Wells, conditioner, Rapid Redux, and a fantastic job. All these different racetracks, all these different distances. All he does is go to the lead and win, and usually wins, uh, you know, by by big time margins. As promised, we'll get into the Breeders' Cup right now. We're not that far away, and. Rich Perloff talking about how he's starting to see the ball a little bit. There's a couple of horses that he likes. And, Rich, I think these are a couple of races that you wanted to discuss in particular. We're going to talk about the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile right now. And we'll take a look at the pre-entries right now. And your horses like to honor and serve are probably going to go in the classic. That's their first choice. Uncle Mo, obviously, the classic as well. Caleb's Posse, this is his first choice. And I know you made a little bit of money, Rich, when he won the King's Bishop beating Uncle Mo in a fantastic finish by a nose at Saratoga on the 27th of August. That's right, Matt, and I'm going to make a whole lot more when he runs in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. Really? That, Come that right is back my to pick. him. Look, this, this guy, Caleb's Posse, you know, he is going to be such an interesting gambling proposition on the on Breeders' Cup Saturday, Matt, because coming out of that win in the King's Bishop, his connection sent him two turns again in the Indiana Derby. He's a nice horse going around two turns. He is light years better as a late running one turn horse. He's going to be absolutely in his comfort zone going the one turn mile there at Churchill Downs. He's going to be my key in the Breeders' Cup. You know, the mile. interesting thing in this race is that the factor, this is his first preference. I think he's going to go in the dirt mile, not the sprint. He's obviously a lightning fast race horse, but the other horse that's the second fastest horse maybe in this field is irrefutable, both trained by Baffert. That's a little odd, isn't it? Two fastest horses trained by the same guy. Well, you know what, Matt? In the aftermath of Euro Ears, monstrous workout the other day, there was just no way he wants to send both of those horses in the sprint. I think yeah. the factor, we know he can get eight furlongs, and with that high cruising speed that he's got, maybe a long one-turn mile is, is right for him. You know, watch out for my man Shackelford. You know, I always liked him. I think a mile could be, I, you know, he's off form a little bit. I know he's off form, but I think a mile could be pretty good for him. As we move on to the turf sprint, always an interesting race. And uh, the thing that surprised me is look at the pre-entries for this race. And, you know, basically, you, you have no preferences here. I mean, you're, you're a turf sprinter, you're not. So all, all these guys want to go in this particular race. For a Breeders' Cup race, Rich, that's five furlongs in distance, there's not that much pace. Uh, yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Uh, I'm, I'm going back to the well. I made, I did great with Chamberlain Bridge last year. I think his form is rock solid. Matt, the most interesting horse in this race is one who's not on that list, and that's Ben's cat. Yeah. Where's Ben's cat? Yeah. That is crazy that they can't get together the money to supplement the he horse. He had that big win at Parks, the sharp right? Parks Racing, he had a huge win. Yeah. You know, he's, he's reeled off about three or four in a row. But trainer King Leatherberry was out there looking for an investor to put up the hundred grand to get him into the race. He's not going to be in there, and that makes Chamberlain Bridge an even more interesting prospect. Chamberlain Bridge was a good closing third in that turf monster. He's Here's your be Ben's on the cat. Outside. Here's your Ben's, Ben's cat. Rich. Wins. Yeah, yeah, and a, a good third, beating three parts in the length. But the key for Chamberlain Bridge is what he does over the over the Churchill turf, and weather could be an issue. We're not really sure. The it was listed as uh, firm last year but it wasn't really a true firm turf course interesting horse for me is a great attack who needed that race in the woodford had the league got a little tired because he hadn't raced since april has some pace as well i think he's an interesting horse in that race as we move ahead to the philly and mare sprint and to me rich you're playing this, these pick sixes with these giant guarantees on both friday and saturday yeah i don't have a problem singling chalk on a pick six on a Breeders' Cup card, and don't you think turbulent descent is going to be really, really difficult to deal with in this race? You know what, Matt? I think Switch might be a single for me. Really? Yeah. Beaten at short prices time and time again. Matt, let me let me tell you something about Switch. 
Please do. Take a, take a look at the PPs. Switch ran a very, very good race in the TCA at Keeneland at a distance that is completely out of her comfort zone. If you dig back to the last two seven furlong oh, races really in her PPs, good, guess okay. what you got? Back-to-back -back grade one wins. She is going to love this, this seven furlongs at Churchill. Yeah, I just think she's off form. I just think she was a better racehorse back then than she, than she is now. I think Turbulent Descent, talk about a distance that she likes. I mean, her, you know, what she did in the test, what Pomeroy's Pistol did out of the test, you know, winning the Gallant Bloom by four, I think she, she could be a single. Rich, I get okay, that, I mean, I, I understand that, yeah. but Turbulent Descent has been doing her damage against the three-year-olds only. This is a different ball game. All right, Rich. Rich, we're gonna, don't, don't go anywhere. Okay. You're allowed to get some coffee and then come right back because uh, we need you towards the end of the show to go over some of the stakes races this weekend and the Saturday play of the day. Right now, flat editor from Timeform, Jamie Lynch, joining us from, from England, I presume. Is that where you are right now, Jamie? I'm in England, Mark. Good morning to you. Somewhere in England. Great album from George Harrison back in the day. I'm, I'm doing extremely well. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. You were on the program a few weeks ago. And um, not only are you a real good handicapper, obviously you bring a, you know, a different side of the handicap than what Rich and I can offer because you know these European horses only about 87 times better than we do. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, you know, you're going to have a filly who's probably going to be your post-time favorite, Haber de Grace. But as we were chatting before we went on the air, Aidan O'Brien's the one European trainer who really, really, um, you know, likes the Breeders' Cup, thinks it's an important event, always ships in for the Breeders' Cup. And he has So You Think, he might be the most talented horse in the race. But he's by High, high Chaparral, two-time winner mm -hmm. of the Breeders' Cup turf, dead heated with Joe Har in 2003. How do you think his turf form will translate to conventional dirt at Churchill? Well, as you say, Matt, he is the best horse in the race. Time form figure of 131, which is a huge figure. And it's unusual to say this, but there's been a sort of anti climax about this horse in his European campaign because he has been beaten three times. He came with a huge reputation. And he's bidding to sort of salvage that reputation at Churchill. And it's a sporting decision by Aidan O'Brien yes. to let him run in the classic. But there is a big doubt about him acting on turf, as you say. You look for clues, you look for his pedigree. He's by High Chaparral. You know him well from the turf. Yep. Obviously, on dirt, no go. You look at his action. I don't know. You guys might know more about this than me, but he's a huge horse. He's a really heavy horse. He's probably the most imposing horse you'll see at the Breeders' Cup. Hmm. But he hits the ground very hard. I don't know how that is going to react when he's, you're talking about his adaptability to move on to dirt. But I, I talked to handicappers and say, well, he doesn't really have, have the pedigree but they're looking for that horse with high cruising speed. He has a high cruising speed, and many times that translates to success on the dirt. Do you agree with that? Yes, I think so, yeah. And this horse, he does have a high cruising speed, but he lacks that extra gear that was seen last time out in the champion stakes at Ascot, where having got himself in a winning position, it was slightly disappointing, slightly disconcerting that he couldn't complete the job from that point. And... You know, he's going to need a good post position here because he's going to need to be ridden positively, you would think, in order to bring his speed into play and also just to avoid the kickback. And if he is in front after a couple of furlongs, we'll all feel a bit more settled about his prospects of winning for Aidan O'Brien. Okay, well, you know, that, that's, that's the last race, obviously, on Saturday. Ra race number 11, last Breeders' Cup race. Uh, the race before is the TVG Breeders' Cup mile, and as good as So You Think is, the, the biggest star that's running either day is Goldakova, who's looking to win this particular race for the fourth straight time and again a, a, as a gambler you know I, I, Jamie I'm just I'm somebody who's gonna try to beat her because as good as she is it's one of the situations Jamie where I'll be betting against her but probably end up pulling for her during the running of the race yeah, if that makes yeah, any sense exactly, to you yeah. yeah exactly and she has been beaten three times the big question mark about Golda Cover is she's a six-year-old now is she as good as she was well we have to say on time form ratings, that's a big yes, it's a big thumbs up for her because she has been beaten three times, but she's been beaten by three pretty exceptional horses. And last time we talked on our weekend about she was going up against Dream Ahead, who really is, we've been spoiled over here with Frankel in the three-year-old department. But if it wasn't for Frankel, then we'd be talking about Dream Ahead as an exceptional horse. And for Goldie Cover to run him so close, over seven furlongs, that tells me that she's still as good as she ever was. R real quickly, by word, I thought was interesting, beat Suraste Agel. Is that how you said the horse's name? And that's yeah. the horse who came back to beat So You Think. So, I, I mean, by word, that was a huge win, wasn't it, that last start? 
a huge win, but it was over a longer trip, and I promise you my fire word will not be quick enough for a Breeders' Cup mile. Okay. He does not have the speed. All right, fair enough. As we uh, move ahead to the, to the Breeders' Cup turf and this race, um, you, I think you have a bigger field than you had last year. You kind of had a, you know, a, a smallish type field in this race, and you have Midday, the mare, you have Serafina as well, the four-year-old filly in this race. You know the thing that, that surprised me about this race as I went through this race briefly, Jamie, is that no one in this field is coming to this race off of a win. Nobody. No. Nobody at a Breeders' Cup race is coming to the race off of a win. It's, a, it's 11 horses we're looking at right now. And Sarafina is the favorite over here. But the worry is that the Breeders' Cup for her, in her case, it's very much an afterthought. Her cup final was the after triumph. That was her Super Bowl. She didn't manage to get the job done. She was caught wide. She was badly drawn. Yes, there was excuses, but she's just getting that reputation as a filly who promises plenty but doesn't quite deliver at the end. And that's the worry with her. She's going to need a fast pace as well, Sarafina. She races with the choke out. She can pull her chance away at times. So just a bit worried about Sarafina. But all the rest, as you say, the European Challenge, we normally win this race. And I think that the horses collectively will be good enough to win this. But none of them really set the pulse racing. So, I mean, Midday was four to five in the Philly and Mare Turf last year. Shared account won that race at a zillion to one. So she doesn't win the Philly and Mare Turf last year, but you think she has a good chance of winning the Breeders' Cup Turf this year, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that it counts for a lot that she's been there and done that. Sarafina, for one, has never raced outside of France. Seamoon, who's in the turf, so Michael Stout, that was very much billed as the new workforce. But Seamoon, last time out in the Group 1 in our final classic, the St. Ledger, he let himself down slightly by finishing only third. And it's almost a vote of no confidence in him that Jugmon Farms are also running midday in okay. the mile and a half turf. So just be a bit worried about that one. But midday, yeah, I think that she, the fact that she's been there, done that, got the T-shirt, um, a seasoned pro, she knows how to operate around there, that's fine. Away at the Dawn is arguably the most interesting one of all because at the start of the season, Aidan O'Brien was saying, this is my classic horse. He's by George Washington, he's got very much a dirt pedigree, certainly compared to So You Think. But the wheels came off big style in Away at the Dawn last time out at York. And very sick horse after that. And it's a wonder, apparently, that he's even here at all. They have chose the easier option of the turf rather than the classic. But all the same, Away at the Dawn, big question mark over him. So for me, Matt, all things considered, the fact that she's been there and done that midday in the turf. Okay, and looking at the time form rings right now. You mentioned So You Think, and they're strong suit. We didn't get a chance to talk about strong suit. See, Moon may be interesting in the turf because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking for somebody against a group that eh, lightly raced at least, maybe yeah. can move forward in career start number six over some other horses. We pretty much know what they have at this stage of their career. Jamie Lynch, flat editor for Time Form, thank you so much for your, uh, for your input. Thanks for being on thank the Thank you, off. And uh, enjoy uh, Breeders' Cup over, over in England next week. Very much we will do. Thank you. Jamie Lynch, good insight. Good insight there. It's been a heck of a first uh, 20 minutes, hasn't it? Picks recaps for last week before we get to our one and only commercial timeout, and then we'll come back and do some quick handicapping with, with Rich, who will rejoin me at that point. Picks recaps, we can fly through these. Racing brand, second and third for us in the Bucks Boy. Illinois Festival of Racing Day at Hawthorne. America's Blossom, fourth at 25 to one. Dundalk Dust, fifth at six to five for Jimmy. As we move, up, move forward, Raven Run, Raven Run. Shaka Khan, Raven Run. Long Lake Christus, Scratch, that's a good thing for me. Roman Treasure, not very good. Ichabod Crane, Mediocre, and the Empire Classic. Ticonderoga. Yeah, I got a little winner at least at five to two, so I wasn't, uh, wasn't skunked. As my daddy used to say, we used to play bumper pool back in the day. And fifth and third play of the day. So after a very good week two weeks ago, a mediocre week last week, try to go with some prices, didn't what am I down, about 60, 55, somewhere in the 50s? Ah, I'm only down 46, 80. And that's nothing with the Breeders' Cup in front of us. Also, three stakes race, our Saturday play of the day. Time to step away when we come back. Waiting moments of blinkers off. A separate fire, fire. clinched the Edward Million and now goes for the second leg of the $1 million Los Alamitos Cash Bonanza. Late Sunday night, it's the Grade 1 $1.2 million Golden State Million Futurity from Los Alamitos. TDG 1 Eastern Champion Pacific. 
If you have 10000 or more in unsecured debt, don't let debt worries destroy your financial security or your marriage. For a peace of mind and a good night's sleep, call 1-800-365-3729 for a free consultation. 800-365-3729. The TVG Saturday Spotlight Race. Join us for the Fayette from Keeneland. Brought to you by Spikestown, standing at Windstar Farm. The Saturday Spotlight on TVG. Three days this week, watch and wager on Suffolk Downs Racing. New England's odds-on favorite for gate to wire excitement. Watch only on TVG. Suffolk Downs Racing, this week, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. First post, 1245 Eastern, 945 Pacific. Are you in trouble with the IRS? Our former IRS agents and tax experts can stop demanding letters, threats of liens, garnishments, or levies. Protect your property and reduce your tax burden. Call 800-925-0667. 800-925-0667. TVG late tonight. Prepare your winning picks the night before on the Bank of America Challenge Champions Preview, live from Los Alamitos. Late tonight, the Bank of America Challenge Champions Preview, 2 a.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific. Fast action, more cash, TVG. Open your wagering account before the Breeders' Cup World Championships and earn a $100 bonus. Sign up now at TVG.com or call 1-888-PLAY-TVG. The world's fastest thoroughbreds compete for $26 million in purses. Sign up now. Act fast to get your $100 cash bonus. Sign up now at TVG.com or call 1-888-PLAY-TVG. Welcome back. We have about five and a half minutes to talk about three stakes race and the Saturday play of the day. Piece of cake Bring for it. Rich Perloff and I. And Rich, were you, were you listening to, to Jamie at all? Or were Every you doing your own word, thing? my friend. Smart guy, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah, See, I, yeah, I love, yeah. I love that, that time form perspective because it's nothing that I exactly. bring to my handicapping at first. It's, it'll, it'll be in the toolbox someday. Someday. Um, the Fayette Saturday Spotlight Race, closing day Keeneland, race number nine, mile and an eighth over the uh, synthetic service there, $150,000. And uh, we don't have a lot of time for, for in-depth analysis. But to me, you're looking for a closer, Rich, because the one, the three, the six, and the eight, decisive moment, Jimmy Sims, future prospect, and wise Dan are all very fast. I'm looking for a bomb, Matt. That's what oh, I'm looking okay. for. i got to get out for the entire meeting. Give me the 10 horse. I owe you big time. That should be an I, not an L. I owe you big time. Matt, I'm doing air quotes <laughs> in the handicapsule. This is an Illinois bread for Team Block, but not really. It's a son of Dinah Former out of a Lord of War mare. I got Bred you. top and bottom for turf, but last time out, for the first time, they actually entered the horse for the synthetic where he's a perfect three for three. He beat a nice Roger Atfield horse in Mobilizer. He's ready for the big time. I like a price horse right to his inside. Guy's reward at 15 to 1. This horse can close. This horse had no pace in the press Kyle mile. He ended up uh, being fifth, beating three and a quarter lengths. He gets that pace, as we talked about in this race on Saturday. You look back, you see a horse ahead behind Cortana. Beat Turalor in a race. Turalor, winner of the Woodbine Mile, beating Courageous Cat. I like him from off the pace. Dale Roman's Corey Lannery at 15 to 1. Bold ruler, grade 3 at Belmont, 7 furlongs. I think the weather is going to be decent this weekend. It hasn't been so in Lexington and Elmont, um, New York, for the bulk of this week. But I think we'll have a fast track for the bold ruler on Saturday. And who, who's the horse to beat in here? Is it Kayaxa Electronica for Rapoli and Pletcher, or is it Rodman? for Mike Hushin and Barry Schwartz. I'm going Rodman. I, I like Rodman in this spot quite a bit. His, his run in the Met uh, Mile on May 30th really points him out. He was 36 to 1 that day, but he was a good second behind Tisway, who, alas, will not make the Breeders' Cup this year. Out of that race, Matt, Rodman's had three starts. He's been sent two turns in his last two. He's back to the one-turn mile. He's going to love it. Yeah, I'm going to go with a horse who's kind of feast or famine, and that's the eight rule by night. When he's good, he's really good. When he's bad, he stinks. And obviously, I'm hoping for the former in, in this particular race. I don't see a ton of pace here. He's quick. He's 8-1 to one morning line. He had a nice win beating, a, getting by Sunrise Smarty at Delaware Park on the 9th of October, who's a pretty good racehorse in his own right. I see a close third to trap shot. He was drilled by Force Freeze, who, and, who could end up being the horse that I bet in the Breeders' Cup sprint. I think he might be able to clear this field. Nakatani's been so good in big races. So I, I will go with rule by night. Nakatani for Asmus and their price. The Princess Elizabeth, last stakes race for us to discuss at Woodbine. Mile and a 16th for two-year-old fillies. 
I really didn't have any opinion in this race at all, to be quite honest with you. Did you? The, well, the two favorites are down on the inside, and it's hard to knock either one of them. Dixie Strike, who was very impressive winning last time out in open company, and the two Blue Heart, who won nicely from a really, really bad post last time out in the Mazarine. I'm, and I'm going to the outside poster. I'm going to go to Rose and Shine, who seems to be improving with each start and I think can work out a trip with Luis Contreras taking the call for Ralph Biamonte. That'll be my pick for a little bit of an upset. All right, second time routing by uh, Mr. Suguchi, who was supposed to be that, that super horse. And there's Rose and Shine, two starts back. I ended up with point of eminence in this race. Again, I don't much have an opinion. Generally speaking, a race, I don't have an opinion. It makes no sense to go with a chalk horse in a race in which you have no clue. So I'm gonna go with a price horse. I thought she looked pretty professional in winning her debut for Reed Baker at odds of eight to one. She won nicely by nearly three lengths. That was at a mile and a 16th. I know it was a maiden 32. That's why she's 15 to one morning line. This isn't a great stake race. I think maybe she can step up and make some noise in here. I don't think she'll be 15 to one though. She'll be half that price. Play of the day. For Saturday, closing day, Keeneland? Yeah, yeah, I'm going back to the Keeneland card. Race number six, Matt, is the first level allowance. Oh, good, I can play a double here. on the poly. Yeah. You, you've got a like long lay Krista. You were prepared to pick her in a stake. Now yes. she shows up, shows up in a first level allowance. Yeah. I'm going to the 10 horse here, Another World. Here's another one who's really improving. Only missed by a nose last time out at Arlington Park. All four career starts on the synthetic. A couple of really nice works at Keeneland, and Robbie Alvarado has been riding great at this Keeneland meeting. Race number seven at Keeneland. I like Paris Vegas, 10 to one morning line, the eight, Robbie Alvarado for Thomas Voss. Again, another race in which you have the three, the 11, the 12, we're gonna be flying early. And Paris Vegas, again, you see that name again, Turalor, two starts back. I, I love his start over synthetic at Hollywood Park last November. He ran second at five to one in a six horse field for breaking slowly. Indian Firewater for Baffer got a pretty easy lead. So back on synthetic as well for Thomas Voss. Cutting back from a mile to seven furlongs. I like Paris Vegas to pull the upset in race number seven at Keeneland closing day. Rich, well done. That was fun. I, I told you it would fly by. This show, this show could have been an hour. Rich Perlaw, thank you very much. So thank you for all our guests, David Wells. And, and uh, next week, oh, oh, Jamie Lynch. I almost forgot about Jamie. I'll be at Churchill next week. Special Breeders' Cup Blinkers Off Edition.